What? Mizzy World Entertainment is back to present another episode of Mad Mizzy Sports. Hope y'all had an amazing weekend. Enjoy the weekend of NBA basketball. We had spring training and baseball kicked off and everything, or however you, whatever term you use for uh, for baseball starting the game. You feel what I'm saying? First pitch or something. Yeah, first pitch for uh, spring training and all that went out there. But um, we gonna start it off with the uh, what the NFL, with the news in the NFL, because you know. Uh, NFL is the number one sports in in America, and that's where I'm located. So let's get into the NFL news. So the franchise tagging and lack thereof of franchise tagging has begun. You got T. Higgins of the Cincinnati Bengals being franchise tag. That's 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 a hard hit right there. You think about Jamar Chase about to get paid. T. Higgins or already got paid. T. Higgins about to get paid for this next upcoming year, like one of the highest paid receivers or yeah, in the top uh, elite receivers as far as pay per year scale goes um so that's going to be a lot for them to take on i don't know how they will address the defensive side of the ball but i guess they like listen we're gonna give it one more run you feel what i'm saying with joe cool jamar chase and t higgins you feel what i'm saying so can't knock them on that with them all healthy they went to the afc championship game they went to the super bowl so can't knock the results but um yeah i i i i was a little shocked at that one i'm not gonna lie i was a little shocked at that one saquon barkley and josh jacobs no franchise tags to me that is just utterly shocking that's uh mind blowing right there to have those two dudes possibly get out on there get out on the market i, I know the giants not about to sign saquon because if they was going to do that they would have did that last year so saquon is going to hit the market and josh jacobs i don't see him coming back to the las vegas raiders so to me that's a a big opportunity for a contender out there for a contender that's looking for a stable running back in that backfield we seen what christian mccaffrey coming to the san to my san francisco 49ers did you dig what i'm saying offensive player of the year and all that so you you know what if saquon still has some josh jacobs which i think both of them dudes do still have a lot left in the tank um listen man i it uh, I can't really put a finger on who because we got to see all how all the other pieces fall and where Justin Fields going to end up. This, this, we got a lot that's going to go on, you feel what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how that all pans out. And then Derrick Henry might be on the market as well. So it's going to be interesting as far as the backfield goes in the NFL offseason this year. Let's touch on Richard Sherman this past weekend being arrested for um, allegedly being drinking while driving i think he was pulled over doing 97 and a 65 mile per hour uh um on a 65 mile per hour road um he was granted five five thousand dollar bond five thousand dollar bail um clearly he'll probably post that and be released sooner rather than later my initial reaction is uh we just don't know they uh, listen he was speeding that's what we know if he was intoxicated or whatever the case may be, we don't know. We also know Richard Sherman be going through some things. You know, you get what I'm saying? He was going through some stuff with the ring doorbell situation with his, I think that might have been his wife or his ex-wife, whatever the case may have been. But yeah, we know Richard, he, he, be, he, be, he be pressing the line. He's a very intelligent guy, graduated from Stanford, but he, he, he know how to push the envelope. He know how to push the envelope, but like I said, my initial reaction is we just don't know. We, we, we don't know. But um, with the NFL uh, combine and draft coming up soon, I don't think that the uh, Chicago Bears should move off of them. I don't think that they'll know how to develop Caleb Williams, and I do not think Caleb Williams is a, a automatic hit. As people were saying, he is uh, the greatest prospect, quarterback prospect since um, Andrew Luck. I said no, he's not better than uh, Trevor Lawrence. And then people started throwing some names out there. He's not a better prospect than Deshaun Watson. When we think about these dudes, when they were coming out, Caleb Williams has so many questions to me. Like he, to me, he's leaning towards. Listen, man, he, he's a lot of flash, but he couldn't do the easy stuff. You good? Like he gonna give you the wild plays. His arm is through the roof, but he couldn't give you the easy stuff. So. That's scary because in the NFL, that's how you eat. You don't eat off of wild plays. You don't eat off of wild plays. We've seen that eat Josh Allen up. Always looking for the wild plays. So, listen, um, for me, uh, they'll move off of Justin Fields. They'll take Caleb Williams. But um, I don't think – I'm saying it first. 
I don't think it's the right decision. For me, I believe that Justin Fields is already entrenched in the city of Chicago, entrenched with uh, the fans just uh, blossoming already growing and developing as a quarterback so I, I i will keep him and see what we can what he can do but they got a new regime coming in you know how that goes and caleb williams got everybody wrapped around his finger so I, I listen i'm i'm first to say it i don't think it's the right decision let's move on to the nba though we had some huge huge well not some huge news but we had a huge weekend in the nba with the nba coming back from nba all-star weekend on thursday nba fights though man what's going on with all the tension in the nba you got five players suspended in the scuffle between the miami heat and the Orleans pelicans jimmy butler being one of them jose uh alvarado being one of them from the new orleans pelicans uh you had the Warriors in, in, in a little scuffle with the Hornets at the end of their game on Friday night. To me, it's just, it's nothing new. Like, the NBA has always been this because it's a finesse game that mixes in the physicality. You get what I'm saying? Like, you can't get no get back in the NBA. In the NHL, they let you boop, bop, bing, boop, bing, 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 get your little hits in, get your licks in and all that, get blow some steam and all that. In the NFL, you get... You, 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 you gonna blow somebody up. You get what I'm saying? Or listen, we gonna see each other right in the middle of the field. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, NBA players, they do stuff. They get off the, the court before the game over. You like, damn, on the bus before you even get out the shower. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a whole different dynamic, I believe, with the NBA. Uh, it's nothing different. But like I said, it's a, a highly competitive finesse game that mixes in, that sprinkles in the physicality or the physicality is a part of it. But there's no real uh, get back. You get what I'm saying? Like, listen, you don't want no get back in the NBA. We seen uh, it was that Kurt Rambis, you know what I'm saying, clotheslining dudes coming across the lane. So we don't want to go back to that. But that's the problem right there is that there's really no get back. So that tension is always building. People are always pressing that line, pushing the envelope. You get what I'm saying? Saying something out the side of their neck. And you got to, you know what I'm saying? Like Draymond said, that's why you got up out of Dallas. All that talking. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, man, I just feel like it's a lot of uh, physicality into what's a finesse game. And they try to control it and corral it. So there's really no get back with the players. So you have this where tensions, tensions, tensions rise. They rise. You feel what I'm saying? People got to let some steam off. You get what I'm saying? And they, they, they don't. You know what I'm saying? They don't. Uh, let's touch in on the playoff run before I end it off my latest episode of Mad Mizzy Sports. Let's look at the Western Conference. You got the Suns right now behind the Mavs. Well, no, you got the Mavs right now behind the Suns. I believe the Mavs are in the seventh seed right now or the eighth seed. I believe they're the eighth seed. And you got the the uh, Phoenix Suns at the sixth seed right now. But the Dallas Mavericks are only, I believe, a game behind, half a game. I believe a half game behind the uh, Phoenix Suns for that number six seed and getting out of the play-in tournament. Who do I have more confidence in moving forward? This one is a good one for me because I think a lot of – fans out there like these two teams you get what i'm saying like you got two highly um high fan base players on each team you get what i'm saying you got bradley bill devin booker kevin durant you got luka Doncic, kyrie irvin so eyes are on these teams you get what i'm saying and right now they're at the bottom of the pack right now not to i'm not throwing no shade or nothing like that but my confidence is more in the dallas mavericks man like listen for the Kevin Durant fans, man, do got to do something outside of Golden State. I'm not trying to hear none of that, man. I know people that want to argue against LeBron James and he cooked, he do this, he did that. Listen, man, when they both led each other team to the finals, Brian got him out of here in a gentleman's sweep. You win that first game, bro, and I got the rest. I got the rest. Chill out. I got the rest. I, I, I got it from here, bro. I got. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't want to hear none of the... Uh, Kevin Durant and his uh, finals MVP, MVPs play, playing with Steph Curry while clearly we knew that the focus was on stopping Steph Curry because they believed that it was easier to stop Steph Curry. So, and then we see in retrospect, he can't even get back to a conference finals after playing with Steph Curry. He got to do something, man. And I don't know who the leader is. I think it's Devin Booker, but I don't know if he really... It. He get too much in his emotions, and then Luca got his number. Luca is in his head, so if they got a cross pass in the playoffs, listen, man, I'm I'm definitely leaning towards the Dallas Mavericks over the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns ain't even really got that much depth. They are super top heavy, just like the Dallas Mavericks. But I think the Dallas Mavericks added a little bit more depth. Yeah, man, I, I like the Dallas Mavericks over the Phoenix Suns moving forward. To me, they are 
uh, the scarier team out of the two teams in the Western Conference, the bigger threat to win it all of the and to win the Western Conference and win it all, the Dallas Mavericks. Let's switch over to the Eastern Conference. Who do I have more confidence in out of the Cleveland Cavaliers and the New York Knicks? You got the New York Knicks at the number four seed, I believe, right now. Then you got the Cleveland Cavaliers at the number two seed right now. They are, I believe, three and the New York Knicks are three and a half games behind the um, Cleveland Cavaliers. And they, I believe they lose them right. No, actually, I think they win. And I think they beat in Detroit. They got to get this win, get a game, get a half a game closer to the Cleveland Cavaliers. But I'm going to lean towards neither of them, man. I ain't got confidence in either of them, man. I know everybody think that the the uh, Milwaukee Bucks not going to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Man, I, I got way more confidence in the Milwaukee Bucks making it to the Eastern Conference Finals than the Cleveland Cavaliers or the uh, New York Knicks upsetting the Milwaukee Bucks and beat and, and meeting the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. So, listen, um, I have no confidence in either of them. I see them both being going by round two. That's, that's my answer to that one. You get what I'm saying? As far as the Suns and Mavs, I believe that they both might be going by round two, but I think uh, there's going to be some fights with the Mavs. The Mavs ain't going to just go out. You feel what I'm saying? I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Dallas Mavericks. Clearly better with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving playing together on the floor. Just a crazy duo right now. Throwing my man Tim Hardaway Jr. just shooting the lights out. My man got the perfect form. He, My man look like Jesus Shuttlesworth. You feel what I'm saying? My man form is ridiculously uh, textbook. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, that's my Monday rundown. Mad Mizzy Sports. Hope y'all had a crazy well, not a crazy, well, yeah, crazy, fun, crazy weekend. Hope y'all had a good Monday, started the week off on the right foot, on a positive note. This is my rundown for Mad Mizzy Sports, Monday edition, NFL News. T. Higgins gets the franchise tag. Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, no franchise tag. What do y'all think on those? On that news? Richard Sherman gets granted $5,000 bail. He should be released soon. If you're the Bears, are you trading away Justin Fields for Kayla Williams? Let me know. NBA side, we got fights going on in the NBA. What's going on with the tension between the NBA players? And then the playoff run starts right now. Who do y'all have more faith in? The Phoenix Suns or the Dallas Mavericks? Or And then on the eastern side, who y'all have more faith in? The Cleveland Cavaliers or the New York Knicks? Y'all know what it is. This is Mad Mizzy Sports. Like, comment, share, subscribe, listen, alert. Listen, man, it's the most passionate, uh, confident, updated info podcast sports media outlet out right now you feel what i'm saying make sure y'all share with the rest of the world don't be stingy you dig what i'm saying y'all know what it is mizzy world entertainment have a good night Got it.